do a little recap of the Jawa Stealth 12. Oh well. Woo! So I'm gonna put you in four drive. Right now? away. Yep. Now it'll take a little no. Four high. Four high. Okay. I'm gonna check your names. Mate, I'm not on my own. So you drive in, yeah. jump and run. Hey guys. G'day guys. Welcome to a new episode and this is uh, an extra special episode because it's the first engagement that we've got in our partnership with Jawa Off-Road Campers. <laughs> Someone's excited. So uh, you may have recently seen on our social media that we've uh, we've got a partnership happening with Jar Off Road. Um, who would have thought 12 months ago, after when we picked up our little Infinity and did our big lap, that would actually be working in partnership with those guys? So uh, you could say that we're living our dream. Um, over the next coming months, you'll see us taking. Uh, different models from the Jawa range out and about putting them through their paces taking yeah. them to the beach taking them uh, off-road taking them into the country doing all sorts of things with them putting them through their paces and uh, making making videos about them so uh, are you excited maybe I am it's gonna be heaps of fun I don't know whether it's gonna be heaps of fun because you know, we're going to be putting the camera in different places as well. Yeah. So we'll be able to get different um, angles um, of the Jawa in action. So I think that that's exciting. I might even get a new drone. <laughs> <laughs> so the first van that we're picking up and we're on our way up uh, to grab it now is what they call the Stealth version 2. So the Stealth is a fully revamped and fully pimped version of the Solera 12 and there has also been an earlier prototype of the Stealth version 1. Uh, this van's a little bit smaller than the one that we travelled Australia in, however it's jam-packed with some amazing new inclusions including uh, 200 amp hours of Enerdrive Lithium, uh, it also has a uh, Truma gas heater uh, which we loved in our last van. Absolutely. And what's your favourite bit maybe? Is the um, hydraulic rooftop what do you call it? <laughs> <laughs> Electric actuated roof. So that's the one. effectively all you have to do is press a button on a remote and yep. up and down goes the roof. So that's a bit exciting. Yeah, that's really exciting. I'm looking forward to that. So it's got some little hidden gems in it. Yeah. Even though it's slightly smaller than our 13. Um, yeah, I'm looking forward to uh, exploring that and uh, showing you guys. Yeah, and I have a feeling that this van uh, is going to be perfect for um, beach missions and things yeah. like that. So we've decided to take the van to Rainbow Beach. Our only challenge in the next few days is looking like it's going to be the weather. Other than that, I think the van will eat it for breakfast. So we're looking forward to bringing you uh, some footage of the van in yeah. action on on you know tight and soft beach entrances and driving up and down the beach at TWR and those sorts of things so um, should be heaps of cool uh, action in this episode. Yeah. Alright so let's uh, quickly talk weights because I think weights are going to be one of the key selling points for the Stealth 12. A uh, van where it is going to be achievable with those older model cars and the one that always comes up in all of the caravan and towing forums is that 2017 back Prado which only has a two and a half ton tow rating and a relatively low GVM and GCM so for the Stealth 12 the compliance stamp on the uh, drawbar tells me that the dry weight of the van is 1960 or 1960 kilograms and the um, ATM or the maximum towing rate of the van is 2650 kilograms so that's legally the maximum once this is registered um, that you can can tow with this van now I've loaded the van and the car up so the car is full of fuel all of our recovery gear all of our towing gear all of our chairs fishing gear 
and the van is full. It ha well, the van has 100 litres of water that I've specifically measured because I knew I'd be weighing uh, the van today. The hybrid on the ball weight scales before I took off, and I'll put this uh, picture of the ball weight scales in. It came in at 195 kilos. So here we are just cruising into our local tip. Um, how good is it? when your tip lets you do this. I think it's a really good idea for road safety because there's so many vans that are um, on the road that are overweight. All right, so as you saw, I just rolled in from the tip and I have uh, done the GCM or the gross combined mass of the van and the car. So remembering from uh, what we were talking about earlier, my car was sitting at 2.95 ton when I run it over the way bridge without the van connected. And the great news is I've taken it over the way bridge with the van connected and it's come in at 5.22 ton, meaning that the van, which is, as I said before, 100 litres of water and uh, fully loaded for us for a week off grid, come in at 2.27 ton. So back to the beginning of, of what I was talking about, if you are pulling this uh, van with an older model Prado or something with a two and a half ton tow rating, an old GU or a GQ uh, Patrol or something like that, the great news is we've come in underneath that ATM weight. Um, really, really impressed. Now. Obviously, every van is gonna weigh in differently because everybody packs differently, everybody brings things differently. So please don't quote me as gospel on all of these particular weights that you'll be safe. But what I'm saying is when I've got this van and this car ready to go, I've been pleasantly surprised with the weights, which is a big issue with these hybrids, particularly if you've got one of those older cars and you don't wanna to have to pay that outlay um, to upgrade yourself to a car with a, a higher tow capacity. So the, for those of you that are following on from home, um, we are at the north end entrance to Kalula or Tiwa Beach. So normally, if you're coming from Brisbane, you're gonna to go to North uh, Noosa and then catch the Twanton Ferry across uh, and then come all the way up the beach. But because we are up at Maryborough last night, we're taking what's called freshwater road. So we haven't done this with uh, a van before. It's obviously four wheel drive only. Talking to the locals, they said that the road isn't too bad, a cup, apart from a couple of tight sections. So it's gonna take it nice and slow on this dirt road. Once we get to a point where it looks like we're doing a beach entry, we're gonna air down and uh, all will be oh, good. Good times. All right, so we've uh, hit some corrugations, which are bigger than I thought they were. So decided to drop some tire pressures now. We're nearing the beach now, so we're airing down a bit more. It's getting a bit heavy. Turn around and show you. So we're gonna air down. We're airing down 18 PSI in the front, 20 in the rear tires and 30 in the van. We'll see how that goes. All right, we made it through that beautiful little freshwater track. Now we are heading down to the beach Ooh, entry.
Grant got a new uh, um, drone and he just put it in the trees. <laughs> How did you manage that? I never crashed Daryl. You've never ever crashed Daryl? Never Darryl. crashed Daryl and on this fella's first flight, he, he had crashed. a little... Is he alright? Yeah, he's fine. So here she is in all her glory, campsite two on the north, or the north end of campsite two on Tiwa or Kalula camp area or Tiwa beach. Uh, we are up on a dune, we've just tried to hide a little bit from the northerly, it's blowing quite badly so I don't think I'm going to put the awning out right now. Um, it's not forecast to rain until later tonight so um, that entire setup, with, particularly with these beautiful roof electric actuators, uh, took about, what do you reckon, hun? Five, ten minutes at the most? Yeah, yeah. Please at the moment. There's March flies everywhere. There's actually one in the van. Ooh. You know the best thing about I having a van? When there's Look. March flies, you can hide from them. <laughs> Good shot. So what's on the menu for dinner? Uh, pork noodle soup. It's Ooh. one of our go-to camping meals. Yeah. Bit of uh, bok choy, tomato, mushroom, a little bit of onion and the Chinese Barbecue pork from Woolies. Yeah. And you get some little two minute noodles. <clears throat> and then boil some water and Bob's your uncle. Wow. Actually, Bob, my uncle, did teach me about this. He did, actually. <laughs> That's very true. Very, very easy. And very delicious. Yeah. It's very satisfying. I need a beer. You do, you're empty. Okay, so we'll join the Mabo on the inside yeah, just to have a quick look around the Stealth 12 on the inside. Hello. Hi. You're taking photos. No, I'm finished now. You're finished now. Yeah. All right, well, what do we want to run through from the start? From yeah, the front? so no, from the back. From the back. From the okay. back. All right. So here you've got the queen size bed. One thing I like about the this version compared to ours, and I shouldn't do that, and I will stop doing that, but I do really like two things. I really like the um, the magnetic. Oh um, yeah, yeah. Were ours magnetic at all? No, no they, they just, just had just the had clips. clips. Yeah. Yeah, they had clips. So your fly screens have magnetic joiners. Can you see me? Yeah. Beautiful. And then the full block out blinds. Yeah. So it's really cool. What's yeah. the other thing? The other thing is the shower head. The shower head's oh, awesome. Oh, okay. <laughs> Yeah, it actually was pretty good. And it doesn't use much water, but it tends to nicely wet you down. Yeah, yeah. So that's perfect again for these off-grid adventures. It's really nice. It's a real gentle water wet down. Yeah, I liked it. Okay. So while we're in here, it's pretty basic shower and toilet combo. Um, <laughs> the toilet is the toilet. It's a Thetford toilet though. Um, has individual flush water. And uh, yeah, shower rows that runs up there. When you're traveling, you just simply take that down and place it onto the little um, hook there, and away you go. So basic ensuite, but in 12 foot, you've got an ensuite. Yeah, exactly. So yep. it's a, you like these cupboards too? Yeah, I like this cupboard. It's massive. Yeah, so and there's a shelf in there. We're already. able to put both our clothes in here. Yes, it's only a short little getaway, but both our clothes fit in here. I've even got the, the washing basket in here, and out of sight as well. That's a week's um, worth of clothes, boss. That's yeah, yeah. Well, it much is, enough for actually. indefinite travel. Yeah. Um, just store my computer bits and pieces in there out of the way. All your cords and charges and, cords, and that charges. sort of thing. Yep. All right, what's below? This, I had all our towels. It's empty now. Oh, yeah, because I had our drying. towels. Yeah, they're out drying. <laughs> I had our towels in here. This is a great little drawer for towels, sheets, whatever. And a little drawer for um, shoes and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, shoes oh, and stuff exciting. down there. Are there. Are hard boots? 
Not that you needed those at all. No, no, no. It's but about you know. 32 degrees and it's 8 in the morning. Just in case. So just uh, quickly to point out a, a bit of instrumentation here. We've actually got the outlet for the Truma gas heater there. Um, we haven't obviously turned that on because of how hot it is, but that worked really um, that would work really well. It has worked really well in our previous van. There's a control for the um, Truma hot water system. This one? Yep. We've also got some USB ports that are handy there for charging of our phones and all of our computer gear and that sort of thing. Uh, 12 volt Sega so um, socket. Uh, a GPO there, uh, your main safety switch and also the control for the gas heater. Which we won't put on. Yeah, which we won't. I'll turn the gas off anyway. Yeah. We've also got this really nicely upholstered Jawa seat. You will notice in this van that there is no table. Now that's sort of a bit of a thing, I guess just due to the small footprint of this van, you just wouldn't have room to move around if there was a table. However, due to the outdoor pantry, we've got this little shelf here as well, which you can use to put your drinks, put a plate of food or a bowl of food and those yeah. sorts of things. Yeah. A couple of Mitchell fans. What yeah, and those little out? lights, they're oh, great. Oh yeah, those reading lights are amazing. Yeah, they're awesome. Yeah, you'll notice that the TV's working and we're deep on Rainbow Beach, so the Jail Smart TV uh, and the new antenna that the guys are using on every van is working perfectly, even though we're fairly remote. <coughs> so what about the front, maybe? Uh, the front, you've got <coughs> some cupboards. Nothing really exciting. Oh, this has got nothing to do with the van, but when we went to set up to put things in here, they would slide around. So it's, um, it's quite annoying. You'll end up with stuff all over the place particularly driving off-road. So I had some little caddies um, that are made out of like a carpety felt, which are great because it stops it from moving, but they're great because you can just put whatever you want in them. Um, so that's a great idea. If you buy one of these vans, look into those. I got them from Ikea, they're fantastic. So I've got two of those down in there. Yeah, they are handy. Yeah, very handy. Uh, oh, you've also got your sink here. Um, this is just a little utility cupboard, holds the keys and bits and pieces. Obviously, if this was your van, you would deck it out that you had maybe some key hooks and bits and pieces, a toilet roll holder, you know, towel, hot, towel hooks and all that kind of stuff. But because we're just trialing it, obviously we didn't deck it out, but of course you would implement those things. Um, there's these deep little cupboards in here too. Oh, that's just our normal bin, in, internal bin. Yeah, so just little cupboards. They're quite deep, actually. And it goes right through, right through to the other side. Yeah. Oh, for those that don't know where to put those, I just, from the uh, from the stove, I put them in the cupboard. Yeah. Out of the way. Nice, handy little cupboards there, just to store your stuff that you're not going to need all the time, but it obviously needs a place to go. Um, the appointment of the lights inside the van, give it heaps of light without using too much battery power. Obviously, they're all LEDs. You've just got the out, uh, sorry, the internal unit for the Dometic dust reduction system there, sitting on the front third of the van, which is uh, the optimal space uh, to put that. You've got the remote controller and some more, just some light switches, some more 12 volt sockets and USB charging points. There's our uh, remote for the air conditioning unit. And down here you've got the main uh, control panel and another, uh, I guess, standard upgrade uh, on this particular van is the Furion head unit um we uh, haven't got it on at the moment but it uh, made beautiful sound last night while we're chilling with some tunes so that's pretty much it um it, it is it is a compact little unit yeah. it's comfortable yeah. inside yeah. outside living um it's about to pour with rain here yeah so and we're it's gonna, really muggy it's really so muggy. hot as you can see we're sweating hot. we're about to get off this uh island, island. so here we go all these march flies it's about to pour. We'd put up with them if it was beautiful sunny weather. All but right, here she goes. She's going to press a magic button. Watch it is. Ah. What that is. Oh, March going to get caught. Oh. Oh, one got out. One got out. 
All right, there you go. These March flies are absolutely insane. I'm so glad we're leaving. Oh, they're everywhere. Yeah, makes it very unpleasant to be outside. Woo. So here we are at the south end. We've just come off the beach uh, at North Noosa and this is the fanciest dump point I've ever seen. Not only do we have two dump points here, we've also got two dump points here. You drive in, so you drive in, yes. dump and run. It's like a drive through It's like a Macca's drive through <laughs> Except, well, probably Macca's taste about the same too. Stop it! may uh, have realized that we're wearing different clothes and that's because we're coming back to have another go uh, with the stealth version 2 at uh, Double Island um, last week when we were here we managed to get a glimpse of coverage and have a look at the uh, weather forecast and it came in pretty savage so uh, the day that we left there was 130k an hour wind gust recorded at Double Island so, so um, glad we left so when, glad we left we did. Yeah. So we're coming in from the south side this time. Uh, you'll have noticed earlier in the video that we went through the freshwater track, which is sort of the Rainbow Beach end or the north, north end beach. of Kalula Camping Reserve. So we're going to go back over the um, car ferry at Tawantan or North Noosa and shoot up the beach uh, the way that we came in. Now, we've got some exciting news because guess who's going to do her first ever <laughs> be beach entry with a van on? It's pretty scary actually because, oh, there's wood on the road. Because Ant's not let me drive the whole oh, bloody lap of Australia with a caravan. Me. It's my job to get her there safely. But now he's allowing me to drive onto soft sand, onto a beach with a caravan. So, go figure. I just want to see her get bogged. And, anyway. And then dig yourself in. <laughs> Make for great footage. Anyway, it's going to be exciting. I've never done it before. I've never towed on the beach. I mean, actually, no, you tell a lie. Day, I did the other day, but it was hard sand, right? So it's like, it's like bitumen. So um, yeah, it's going to be a bit, uh, a bit nerve-wracking, a bit exciting. So hopefully, we can show you some awesome footage of my driving. Yeah, I'll, <laughs> I'll see you with a shovel and some max tracks. The standard vehicle um, up to 5.5 meters is ten dollars, and long vehicles 9.75 meters, twelve dollars. So I think you got to add those two. Yeah, yeah, you do. So twenty-two bucks to come over with your car and your caravan. That sounds pretty good. So while we're waiting for the ferry, just thought it would be a great opportunity to let you know how much it is to actually camp over here at Kalula Beach, Tiwa Beach. Um, that a bit lately. Anyway. <laughs> anyway, it's seven dollars per adult per night to stay over here and then you also need your car permit as well to be on the beach and it worked out to be about thirteen dollars something per day so I just simply got a weekly pass and that was for the car permit uh, thirty five dollars fifty for a week permit for the beach. So yeah, all up it costs us because we're doing two nights here, sixty-three dollars fifty, and then plus your ferry barge return. across return. Forty-four bucks. Yeah. So about hundred and ten. Hundred and ten. If we stay an extra night, so we're only booked for two nights, but if you stay an extra nights, it's only fourteen bucks. Mm. So yeah, I mean when you when you weigh it up, total beachfront, um, the the beach conditions last week were good. Yeah, um, a bit oh, they're spots, even better this time. No so the high tides be. early this was early this morning, and then high tide again is um, like six thirty, I think. So it's oh. ideal conditions at the moment with weather and tides. And Ooh. there's no wind. Yeah, that's the best bit. Yeah. So the awning's going out. About to hit the beach entry where Mavo's going to drive. 
We're just airing down. Now, I just wanted to quickly talk through the van because I was thinking about it the other day, thinking, oh, people, when I say I'm going to go to 30 in the van, might think that 30 is a bit um, high. You know, everybody traditionally for the beach goes to 18, uh, 20 PSI. So um, the reason that I only go to 30 is because we've got a single axle, uh, axle van. So if you think about my car, which is sitting at nearly three tonne, that three tonne is dispersed over uh, four tires that are hitting the ground. Whereas this van, which is sitting at around 2.3 tonne, has only got two tires that are touching to the ground. So it's only dispersing that weight over those two, or the single axle or those two tires. Hence, I don't want to go down as low as sort of 20 or 18 in the van, simply because those axles have nearly one and a half tonne pushing down on them. So beach driving isn't necessarily about the PSI that you set at, although going down is obviously the smart thing to do. It's about the bulge in your tire as well and how well it floats over that soft sand. So um, guarantee you, I'll show you in a sec, once this uh, tire is down, that there'll be a fair amount of bulge um, on that 30 psi setting. Just another trip tip, I use Camp Boss adjustable deflators simply because I want to run 18 in the front axle, 20 in the rear axle and 30 in the van. So because the Camp Boss has come in a set of four inflators, I actually use the same inf uh, deflator for the front axle, the, the rear axle and then the van. So I'll set one to 18 PSI, one to 20, one to 30, and I simply just swap that one over to the other side of the van. It means that you've got to wait for one side to finish and then the other side to finish, but I know that those camp bosses are pretty accurate, but they're not always 100% bang on. Um, so using the same deflator on the same axle means that you're gonna have the same PSI in each tire. So just a few tips there uh, to make sure that you've got consistency around your vehicle. All right, I'd be lying if I didn't say that I'm a tad nervous. <laughs> and right, you're gonna you're gonna actually set this up, aren't you? So that I'm in full drive and because I don't know what, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just checking our tire pressure monitoring system to make sure that everything's consistent. 19s in the front, 20 in the rear, and yep, 29 in each of the van tires. So we've got some nice consistency there. Where's my little deflator bag? You're gonna be out of uh, out of sorts, aren't you? Because you're not actually here. Yeah, it feels a bit weird, so I'm going to put you in four-wheel drive right now? away. Yep. Yeah. Now it'll take a little... No, four high. Four high. Okay. <laughs> and then you've got a traction control button on that side. Yeah. Which is like a car doing a skid. Yeah. Press and hold that. Yep, TCS off. So that will just mean that when the wheels start to spin, it won't try and bog down and distribute it power. Okay. All right. Yeah, now. I think I'm on my L's or something. <laughs> I kind of feel like I'm a learner. Because we're in high range. You know what? Most importantly, I'm going to take my thongs off. <laughs> <laughs> Not as important as going into four drive or anything. Um, all right, we're ready to go. Do Notice. I really need that while I'm on bitumen? It's literally just there. Okay. So the car will kick into four drive while you're driving along. Check your mirrors. <sighs> Mate, I'm not on my L's. Yeah, right. You just said you feel like you're on your L's. Yeah, I feel like that, but seriously, you don't need to tell me to check my mirrors. So exciting. I don't know whether we're going to get bogged or not, but uh, I, it, she, Amavo is going to dig herself out if she gets us bogged. And it's bloody hot today too. So. It's hot. It's busy. Yeah, but aren't you going to get out and tell me when I'm good to go? Yeah. Holy shit. Shh, I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> oh, this looks easy. Can you... Jump out? Yeah, jump out. Go, oh, I, was... I can hear you. Okay, it's really calm. Come over to the left. Can I just go? Yep, go now. Oh my god. It's like driving on bitumen. really uneventful sorry about that we'll try again on the way out easy drive easy drive mate. 
It is beautiful out there though. Well, that was really uneventful, however, it's really nice drive on the beach today. <laughs> yeah, as Dee said earlier, the tide is uh, on its way out, which has just swept the, the beach perfectly. There are a few lumpy bits up around the corner here though. Yeah, true. So, you know, you're going to have to keep your eye on your speed and your momentum. I tell you what, it doesn't really feel like you're towing a van at all. All right, so let's have a look at these camp zones so you can get an indication of where are the best places to camp on a Kalula Camping Reserve. Um, this is Camp Zone 6 coming up now. Camp Zone 7. Zone 4, there's a big bed in there. So here we are at zone two. It's very quiet. Yeah, right there. That's perfect. Yeah, I've got ya. So we're just trying to find a spot to land the van. So Ant's out having a look. We're a decent spot. Roger that. I just, I haven't got any March flies either. Ooh, no March flies. Okay. Okay. Oh, maybe is gonna land the van. She's got instructions. Whether she listens to me or not will be a different story. She's pretty confident in terms of her beach driving. Just not with the van much before. Haven't done a bad job either. This will do us nicely. It's even, I think it's nearly level too. Mate, you should have had me driving more often. Yeah. That's hot. <laughs> Okay, so here we are set up literally 10 minutes after we landed the van. That is the quickest setup that we've ever had, including the awning. Um, the electric roof actuators actually make the job super simple. I don't know whether it's because the van's smaller than the one that we've had, but it just felt like a really easy pack up. Oh, sorry, set up. We keep saying pack up, it's oh, set up. Sorry, mate. Oh, maybe he's putting the crock bin on. Everybody needs a crock bin. If you haven't got a crock bin version two, get yourself one. Um, so here we are, we've got the uh, outdoor kitchen all ready to go, um, the inside oh, of the van, oh, someone's going to have to put her bug zapper on, um, here we are in the van, all ready to go, haven't put the doona out but let's face it it's about 34 degrees, I doubt whether it's going to get below 20 tonight, so I don't think we're going to need the doona. How good is this? Go for it. So beautiful, such beautiful weather. Got myself a nice little bevy as well.
old Mavo is on the hunt for pippies, catching our bait because again as usual we brought the fishing rods and didn't get any bait, but she's doing alright here, she's caught a few, I've been sent up to the van to grab the bucket. How beautiful is this afternoon? Not bad. Oh, it's a rock. <laughs> oh, there's one there. Where? Right there. Where? Right there. Maybe not. No. Oh, what's Wait. your bucket? <laughs> Let's go and eat dinner and drink more. Well, How good's a hot shower? Oh, maybe. <laughs> it's good. It's really good. 12 foot Beats man. Camping. <laughs> We've still got a hot shower. And a queen size bed. With a TV. Such a beautiful morning. Lovely morning. Yeah. Beautiful. Oh, yeah. Making coffee. Even eh? better when we have coffee. Yeah. So I just went to check on my pippies because I'm going to go for a fish soon. And I discovered the bucket was full of all of these little beetles that seem to be trying to get the pippy. I have no idea what they are. It's cleaning the shell. I've never seen a beetle that can swim like that before. Do you reckon it's cleaning or eating it? Well, trying to eat the algae off the shell or get to the pippy. I don't know. They're oh. swimming beetles though. Yeah, they are. Alright, so how many fish are you going to catch? Um, I don't know. I'm just going to give it a go. Because you're not a fisherman, you can't really guide me. I'm just making it up as I go along. So, please, help me out here. Give me some tips. I have no idea what I'm doing. I've got my beach rod. I once went fishing with friends of ours. And I really didn't understand beach fishing. <laughs> it was hilarious. Really I'm like, place. I don't get this. And then I caught something. I was like, oh my gosh, this is so cool. Love it. So anyway, now I'm going to give it a go myself with me pippies. Oh, oh you're going to lose your pippies, mate. Maybe I need to come up a little bit more. So, oh, look, there's another one, the baby one. Um, oh, high tide was 7.30 this morning. It's about 9.30 now. Nah, about 9. So I thought, I don't know, do you fish now? So two hours, well, nearly two hours with the changing of the tides. I think you meant to fish on the change of the tides, but anyway. All right. I need more lead. I don't think we're going to catch anything to be honest, but it's a bit of fun. Mavo's having a great time. Look at her. Oh, there might be fish just taking it. Having fun? Yeah. So after hours of fishing, I think it's a little whiting. Yeah, I need to let him go. It looks like a little whiting. I'll hold the. Hopefully it doesn't do anything. Get your glove, mate. It's just over there. No, oh, yeah, it took it off. Hold him around the gills. Oh my god, it's so slippery. I'm sorry, little man. See, this right, is. I need something, huh? Yeah. 
good white linen shirt that she had to buy somewhere. Oh, I'm gonna break my neck. You're hooked in good. He's away. My little mate is happy about it. Did he did he chew through the croc bin? This is a true test of a croc bin. Hang on. It's gonna get a bit more footage of him. He's a beauty. That's impressive. He was just waiting for that moment that we went down to the beach. Yeah. We're only down there 10 minutes. I know. All right. Let's check out this crock bin. Oh, so cool. oh, you can see his path. Let's see what damage has been done. All right, where did he get into it? I think he's gone through the lid. Because ah. the crock bins are meant to be no way to prove. Did you just have it sitting on the ground? I did. It's my fault. Oh yeah, yeah. he's just gone through the lid. This is my fault. Um, we're literally only down there for about 10 minutes, so hopefully he hasn't eaten any plastics or anything like that. But proof that you need to be a bit careful. Literally had the main rubbish bag in the boot of the car, ready to go to the tip. Yeah, the crop bin survived. He's gone in through. Lid. What a clever little lizard. Look at him, he's still over there. Yeah, he's waiting. He's just waiting. All right, so let's do a whip around at the outside of this van now that we're set up and uh, ready to go. So let's start at the back here. Dual spare tires, really essential when you're off-road. There's also rated D shackles and recovery points sitting on the back of the van here on both sides of the van. Relatively standard stuff, but it's great to have point out here too that we've also got an input here for our solar charging so this is really really handy when plugging in a soft panel if you've seen our other videos I love my soft panel so that's just going to bump up the efficiency and the wattage going into um, the battery when uh, you're off grid pretty standard here just your outlet for your Truma hot water system got your outdoor shower your 240 volts in Pick our shower tent. These are all standard on the jar range. Um, nice pieces of kit. These outdoor things are really, really handy in two situations. One, if you're covered in sand like we've been most of this week out there from the ocean, come out here and rinse off before you go in. And also if you're traveling with a couple of teenage kids and those sorts of things and you don't want them running in and out of the van, you've got the option of running the outdoor shower. So I might field. give that a go this afternoon. An outdoor shower? Yeah. Ooh. We don't even put this out though. Um, we've also got the water filler here, and this is just the outdoor vent for the Trumac gas heater that um, is included on this uh, particular van as well. I'm just going to point these out really, really quickly. I know they're rims and tyres, but Joe have just upgraded their um, standard rims. So this 16 inch alloy wheel, I think looks really smart. Our 18 and uh, or 19 now and 21 year old sons both actually commented on the looks of these rims. So. Um, just a nice little touch, just adds to the toughness of this van. Uh, pretty standard, Bedford toilet, not going to show you in there. A <laughs> um, couple of things here though, um, and this is sort of innovation. Uh, we've owned a 21 model Jawa and this is now a prototype of the 23 models. And I, I love these small touches and improvements that keep happening. So these pinch welds and then these rubber seals and locking systems have actually improved well and truly um, over the course of time. And they're not the sort of things that you're looking at when you first buy a van, but I really rate these. They're, they're super um, watertight because we've tested this in a fair bit of rain now. Anyway, generator slide, pretty straightforward, but also the addition of these handy little uh, tool drawers. You can whack your recovery gear in there. You could put your, I've got my hose links and those sorts of things, uh, but plenty of space. And again, a big cabin, so not wasted space when your generator's sitting here, where you can put other things in there and lock them away. Just a quick show of the tunnel boot. Pretty straightforward, but it runs all the way through. Um, and we just store anti-flap kits, uh, all those sorts of things. We'd, we'd pack this obviously a lot more significantly if we were doing a lap like we've just done. Now, this is a really, really big point that I wanted to show everybody. These electric or 12 volt roof actuators make the setup and packing up probably about, 
I don't know, five minutes quicker. Yeah. And um, if, if I was to be really honest, um, we probably wouldn't have opted for these if they were a uh, upgrade on our van that we purchased a little while ago. However, it's a little bit like car air conditioning. <laughs> you don't really need it, but once you've used it, you don't you're probably wanna... not going to yeah. go back. Yeah, I don't want to go without it. So I was a little <laughs> bit um, unsure about the roof actuators, but um, when we packed, uh, uh, when we sorry, sorry set up yesterday, um, we were set up in like five minutes before we put the awning out if, if that so um, it does make it quicker as I said I wouldn't have opted for it but as a standard inclusion and now having used it not gonna go back uh, all right let's move around to the front here really quickly you got these beautiful big toolboxes the middle one is for dual gas bottles pretty standard they're the new fittings as well guys so if you're picking up one of these vans it's got that double thread on it Make sure you've got the right fittings. And then just two storage boxes on each side. You can configure these however you want. We're traveling relatively light because we're only doing, you know, short, sharp trips at the moment. You can whack your jerry cans in there. You could even mount a jerry can holder in there if you wanted everything to be stable. All right, let's have a look at this drawbar really, really quickly. Really conveniently located tap. Um, I find that this has improved uh, from models in the past as well. DO35 hitch, pretty standard, um, but again, movable and very handy in the event of an accident that you never want to test out. Arc 750 Extreme off-road jockey wheel. These things are just bomb proof. They work really, really well. And this little box here is different to what we've had in the past. This is just your power supply for your breakaway cables. So open her up and it opens a full 180. You've got full access to the front and the back of the fridge. Now, there's a couple of other things that are questions that have been coming through from some things that we've posted. This, can you get in to the back of this fridge compartment without having to lift the lid off because it's restricted? I'll show you really quickly. Yeah, you can. <laughs> so it's pretty straightforward. You've just got to pull the slide out as far as she goes and away you go. 95 litre Evercool version two fridge, super cool app that you can get for this. You can make all your changes and those sorts of things. It's actually, a, it's a beautiful fridge. It's running really efficiently as well. I think it's better than the version one fridge. Um, we're running both sides as a fridge. You can actually power down one side of this fridge and only run the one side, which is cool innovation from Evercool as well. I think it's a really good piece of kit. Um, more Jawa stuff as well. Um, in most of their models, they have these really cool little pantries can keep your food safely in here and uh, it's there out of the way or whack that away pretty straightforward through here little tray table we've got a GoPro and now coffee and that sort of stuff on it let's take a look at these little pantries so mirror image so I'll just have a look at this one just locked it mama has got all of her um, crockery or not crockery because it's made out of bamboo you don't want it to smash it in but uh, all that sort of stuff in there all of her wine glasses because she has so many wines oh, whatever. Um, that one's just got paper towels and those sorts of things in it you got your sink and four burner stove here pretty straightforward but uh, again it's really nice to have a four burner stove now let's have a look Mavo's super excited about this <laughs> this is upgraded on previous models you can fit your knives and forks in here beautifully she doesn't have me in the garage trying to smash this divider out so that we can put a different one in and again just storing all your gear in there nice and neatly and away yeah and i just store the detergent garbage bags tongs all that sort of stuff in the other one so that basically oh and the awning guys um, we didn't have this up the other day but it's pretty straightforward uh winds out make sure you get yourself a set of navigator straps because uh, they are really handy. We had a fair bit of wind whip up last night and the change directions came from the east uh, and it stood beautifully. So um, all in all, oh, quickly, quickly <laughs> on the awning. I do want to talk about this. So we've had a few comments online on some of the photos that we've been posting about this awning sticking out and it potentially being a bit of a pain when you're driving in uh, the bush and those sorts of things and, and the propensity to be able to, um, I guess, hook that awning up. Now. There's a, there's a needs payoff here because if you've got a decent set of mirrors, all I did while I was driving through the bush the other day that you would have seen on the video earlier, is I pushed the mirror up so that I can have a look at where that's tracking. So making sure that when I do see trees that are looking relatively low, 
I'm keeping an eye on where the awning's going. But what it also does is it brings the awning out over the fridge. So that's the payoff. And I'm, to be 100% honest, would want that covering the fridge, particularly if you're putting the annex on, wrapping around, you want your fridge cavity sitting inside your awning. It's beautifully braced. It's really heavy duty um, attached to the van. So I've got no concerns with that almost metre stretch or couple of foot stretch um, coming out over the van, but it's a payoff, guys. So I, I'm, I'm really glad that this awning is, is extended out for all of the reasons that I've spoken about. So um, that's the outside of the van. All right, so let's have a look at the 12 volt setup in this particular van as well. And it's something you need to keep an eye on when you're selecting vans from the range that are on the market as to what's included in the van and what's not included. So let's take a look at this one. So under the bed here, we've just quickly packed her up. 200 amp hour BTEC and a drive lithium battery. So probably about the best quality you can find on the market. I love the Enerdrive gear, not only because of the quality and how efficient they are, but also because of the application that you can put on your mobile phone uh, to, uh, I guess, monitor your battery's performance. We've also got the inside unit or the uh, Truma Vario heater. Uh, it's a bit hot for a heater right now, but that's neatly packed in here. It's vented out to the side of the van, you would have seen on my walk around, and it comes out here pushing nice warm air when it's cold. 2000 watt inverter, it's pretty straightforward, and I'll show you where the inverter controls are in a second. And then you've also got, over this side, your battery charger and your DC-DC. Both 40 amps, um, and a drive gear, great quality. Now really, really quickly, your inverter controls are sitting over here on this control panel. You've got a few control panels in your van. This one in the control uh, in the uh, tunnel boot, you've got this main one here. You've also got one for the water pump sitting underneath uh, the sink. So, pretty straightforward here. Simply just switch the inverter um, interface on here. Toggle the little on button there, and away you go. It's showing us our vent, uh, sorry, our volts and then also showing how many watts we're using. The fridge must be dormant at the moment, so we're not using any power whatsoever. And uh, we've got a nice sunny day, so she's filling up. So, all right, let's do a little recap of the Jawa Stealth 12. What do you think? We've taken this van away three times now, so little short trips, um, but we've uh, gotten to know it. We've towed it uh, a good couple of thousand kilometers now. Uh, so I think we're in a position to give everybody a rundown of where we're at. Yeah, I think it's a great little van for um, short little getaways because it is quite small. Um, I definitely uh, think that it's a van that has everything that you need. Yeah, everything that you need in a very small footprint. So number one for me, uh, the le electronic roof actuators. Oh my God. I don't think I ever want to go back to manually doing that. I definitely want to have that as one of the extras in these vans. And this, it's included on this particular model. How good is that? Yeah. Um, it's like air conditioning in the car, which I've probably already said. Once you, once you have it, you're never going to go back. Yeah. Number two, it's a really good looking little van. Number three, the list of standard inclusions. So the Enerdrive uh, lithium batteries, the inverter, all of the charges and those sorts of things is a really, really good standard inclusion and you're not going to find that in most hybrids on the market. Yeah. Number four, what do you think? I love the shower head in <laughs> the Jawa. <laughs> I don't know, it's just got a beautiful, nice, calming mist about it. It's really nice. And it doesn't use much water. And it doesn't use much water, yeah. So that's oh. a plus for me. And number four, the big one. Oh, sorry, you keep that. Yeah, the cupboard. I love the cupboard. We can both store enough clothes in the cupboard. It's got nice um, depth about depth about the shelves and height about the shelves. And there's also a light in there as well. So I can see what I'm trying to get right at the back. So I love that. The other huge one for me is the weight of the van. You would have seen uh, my weight specifications earlier. We've got the van fairly well packed um, to come in under 2.3 tonne is again, compared to other hybrids on the market, even in the Jawa range, significantly lower, allowing you to do all of the off-grid stuff that we love doing. Bit of a game changer. 
I think it's a game changer. I think it's it's perfect for an active couple. Um, the actuators mean that if you've got any sporting injuries or bad shoulders or those sorts of things, you can get the roof up without having to worry about it. And um, yeah, small footprint, but packs everything that a larger van has into it. Mm. The only things I think you need to keep an eye on, other than the size of the van, if you're going to be doing super long-term travel, I'd be looking at a bigger van in the range. Um, the only other thing that I'd um, make people aware of is the price point. So this is going to retail at $63,000, which when you, when you look at what's available on the market out there, it's quite expensive. However, uh, as, I've already, as we've already detailed in all of our walk around, if you were to run through your, your roof actuators, your lithium battery, your dust uh, reduction system, yeah. your gas heater, all the standard inclusions, um, you're probably looking at twelve, thirteen thousand dollars worth of kit that's been bolted onto this van as standard. So when you actually start to bring that down to that around that 50k mark, this is really, really competitive. So. Yeah. Um, I've been really surprised, pleasantly surprised. I was thinking it's going to be too small. It's going to be, you know, not what we were looking for. But I'm really going to miss her, actually, when we hand her back. I would yeah. consider, if we were doing shorter, sharper trips, I would consider oh, buying this van totally. really highly. So e Easy to store, um, great yeah. little van to get away and do you, do all your little adventures with. Um, and it has everything that you need. Uh, it, it, it tows really well, I can vouch for that. <laughs> I've been towing her and she's easy as yeah. to tow, yeah. So have a think about it, have a think about how you're going to be using your van, what are the things you need and the things that you don't need, but uh, I think you'll find that this one is great value, so thumbs up. Thumbs up from us. Thumbs up.